This video is sponsored by Skillshare. What's going on guys, Aldrin Astacio here with FlightPath.com. Now here we have the new DJI FPV drone and if you guys haven't seen my previous videos, I did a full review on this drone as well as an unboxing. So if you guys haven't seen those videos, make sure you check the links above as well as down below to watch those videos first before this video, which is more about how to set everything up. So what I have here is the FPV combo with the added Fly More, which is a couple extra batteries as well as the battery hub. Now once you get everything unboxed, what I like to do is normally get everything here on the table nice and spread out because of the fact that we're gonna get everything powered up, charged up, also get the firmware updated and everything, get everything linked together, do all those things that you're gonna need to do here at home before you actually take it out for your very first flight. And before we get everything all set up, a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. And for those that aren't familiar with Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community that really focuses on the creative arts. So if you're looking at getting into videography, photography, illustration, Skillshare has thousands of classes to choose from. Now over the past year, I've taken a bunch of courses, everything from branding to communication to how to vlog better. There's a lot of courses on there that just really help you level up certain aspects of your creative field. And for those that don't know, I'm actually a UI UX designer by day. So there's a bunch of courses on that that I've been taking last year, everything from user personas, strategy, and also as far as the software goes, I've been using Sketch for a while now, but I've been looking at that transition over into something like Figma. So I did take a bunch of Figma courses on Skillshare. And of course, the great thing about online learning with Skillshare is that everything is online, so you are able to take it at your own pace. So if you are looking at leveling up one of your creative skills or wanted to add a new skill to your tool set, make sure you guys check out those links down below. And thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. The first 1,000 people to use a link down below in the video description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. And now, back to the video. Now with everything laid out on the table, let me quickly go through with you what I have here. Of course, I have the goggles. I already have the antennas already screwed on there. I have, of course, the aircraft itself, the remote control. I have the battery source as well as the battery hub. This is something you can get if you get the fly more combo. Got my propellers right here, four of them. And I have the battery that's for the goggles with the cable that goes to it. I'm using an iPhone X, so I will be hooking up this OTG cable USB to the goggles and then using a USB to lightning to hook up to my phone. And speaking of phone, the first thing you're going to want to do is download the most recent DJI Fly app to the device you're going to be using. So now that you have the most recent app on your device, the one thing you want to do before you do anything else is charge all of the batteries up. The batteries from your aircraft, the batteries on the remote control, as well as the battery that's going to be powering up your goggles. Now if you have the FPV combo, it does come with the power brick by itself, the fly more combo is what comes with the hub, but all you have to do to charge up your battery is plug it into the wall and then plug this in right there. And if you do have the hub, all you have to do is plug in the power source to the side of the hub, and then you plug in your batteries to the actual hub. So there's one there. What's nice is that on this power brick, there's USB ports here. So all you have to do is plug in the USB cable and then plug one of these into the remote control and then the other one into the battery for the goggles. Now with all that gear being charged up, you can now install the propellers onto the motors. Now to install the propellers, what you're going to do is take two of the propellers that have the red circles. If you look in the middle right here, you'll see a little red circle. Two of those will have red circles and then two of the propellers will not have anything at all. That red circle will match up to the red lines here on the motors. And to install it, all you have to do is place the propeller right on top. You'll see where the grooves sit. It's spring loaded, so all you have to do is press down on the propeller and then turn the motor with your left hand and then it'll lock. Now that the propellers are all installed, you're gonna to wanna to take off this gimbal cover here. The way I normally do it is I press in from this side here, this left side. I kind of press in, and it'll, it'll kind of unlock it and then I grab it from the bottom and then I pull up and then there you go. You wanna take off this gimbal cover because if you try to power on the drone, the camera actually has to go through a little warm up sequence and if you have that gimbal cover on there, it won't be able to move. Now your actual sticks are hidden here on the inside. So if you guys haven't seen that yet, they're tucked away right here nicely. So all you have to do is pull those out. There you go. All installed there and then the antenna is pointed down right now. You're gonna to wanna to flip this antenna up. That way you have the best signal. Now to power up the battery is actually the same way you're gonna power all of your other devices on. So if you guys aren't familiar with how to power on the DJI equipment, they all use the standard 
press once and then press again and hold. And that's how you're gonna power on something like this, the battery for the goggles. Same with the drone as well as same with the remote control. You're gonna to need to plug in this end now into the goggles. Now the next step, you're gonna to need to activate your aircraft. So you're gonna to want to get that OTG to USB cable as well as a cable they're gonna to use to hook up to your device. I'm using the iPhone like I mentioned. So what you wanna do is plug in the USB-C side to the left side of the goggles and then plug in your device to the cable. So plug that in and there you go. Now I am logged into my account. And of course we don't have anything that's showing yet because we haven't powered everything else on. But the first thing you wanna do is if you haven't already register for a DJI account and if you already did that, then all you have to do is log in into the app. Now that we're all logged in on the app, what we wanna do is power everything else on. So insert the battery again, make sure it does click in there. Make sure you hear it click in and then that little plug at the very top, press once and then press and hold. Ooh, yeah. But now that the drone is powered on, let's do the same thing with the remote control. Now once it's all powered on and the DJI Fly app is open, you know it will probably have a firmware update. And if you do have one, it'll show up there on the left-hand side of that home screen on the app. Now if you're not seeing anything through the goggles or through the app, it might be because of the fact that your goggles aren't linked to the drone. Now out of the box, they should be linked up, but if they're not, it's pretty easy to link up the goggles with the drone and you also wanna make sure that you have the drone linked up to the remote control. Now to link the goggles to the drone in case they aren't already linked, right below where the power is plugged into the goggles, there's a little dot right there at the very bottom and really what that is is just a linking button. With everything powered on, what you're gonna do is get something like a pen or a paper clip and press that button in and you'll start hearing it beep. There you go. As you can hear that beeping. Now, while that's beeping, what you wanna do now is press the button on the back of the battery, press and hold that. You'll hear it beep. And there you go. Now the goggles stopped beeping because it is now synced up with the goggles. And you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing now with the remote control. Now that everything's linked up, all the firmware has been updated, let's put the goggles on, talk a little bit more about what you're seeing on screen. And on the bottom left, we have the end for normal mode as well as all of the data that's gonna be down there, how fast you're going, how far your distance away you are from the home point, how high up you are, all that data will be on the bottom left hand side. And that N would switch to S if you're in sport mode as well as M in your manual or the acro mode. On the very bottom right, we have the information on the battery life of the drone. And that countdown will actually show you how much time until the battery depletes. Next to that, we do have the obstacle avoidance. Right now it is turned off. Now zero satellites is because of the fact that we are indoors, so you're not gonna have any GPS lock. And on the very bottom right, it's 53% or 52% now the battery life on the goggles, so battery life on this right here. On the very top right, we have the minutes available left on the SD card that's either in your drone as well as one in your goggles. So you can actually put an SD card in your goggles if you wanna record all that flight footage that you're actually seeing. Now it doesn't record the display, it doesn't record that heads up display, but it at least records the flight. So I do recommend getting an SD card, putting it right here on the goggles if you want to record the flight footage that's coming through the goggles. And right here in the very front, like I talked about on the unboxing, the very front right here is where you're gonna put your SD card right next to that USB-C port. There's an SD card slot there. So all the footage that you're shooting will record to that SD card. Now let's quickly go through some of the menu system that you're gonna to want to know about before you get out there. So what you wanna do first is click that 5D button down and it'll then bring up that menu system on the left hand side. And on the left hand side you now see it says status, album, transmission, and setting. Go ahead and press down on that 5D button again and then it'll say status, GPS, vision, unavailable. And that's because we are indoors so you're not gonna be able to do anything on that at the moment. We will go through it again once we go outside. Next, we're gonna click out of it by clicking the button right next to that 5D stick. And then go down to album. Album basically is what you have shot. What's on your camera roll on this system? So right now we have some shots in here, of course, and then also where I just flew recently. You're gonna click back out of there. Transmission, we have the pilot transmission. We have what's the broadcasting is currently off. So there's gonna be some options for you to broadcast later, but we don't have that option at the moment. Change your aspect ratio, change your focus mode, and change your channel mode from here. And you can see the audience we have, it's grayed out right now because of the fact that, like I said, I think there's gonna be some stuff that we're gonna have later on 
that they're including it here. It's just not activated at this moment. Click back out of there, go down to settings. Settings is where you're gonna probably do all of your work. Go into settings and then for the first one you see safety. Click on safety. This is where you see your max altitude, max distance away, return to home altitude, update your home point, obstacle slowing, and then things like compass calibration, IMU calibration are there at the very bottom and very similar to what you'd be doing on something like the Maverick or the Phantom drones. Get back out of there, go down to control. Control, when you click on remote control, this is actually where you're gonna be doing any of your changes to the remote. So if you do wanna go into manual mode, you're gonna to have to go into the menu system here, change it into manual mode like I talked about in my review. Even if you click manual mode, just by clicking the remote, it won't just automatically jump into manual acro mode. You have to take an extra step by going through the menu system in the goggles to activate it. That way it's more of a fail safe or a, a safety feature so that you don't just accidentally hit the remote control. So in button customization, you can customize all the buttons on your remote control. If I click down here, go all the way down to the C1, well, you know what you want the C1 to do, the C2 to do, the custom modes. Go down to the very bottom, and this is where that custom mode I talked about for the manual. If I click this, now I select manual mode here. Now it'll tell me, hey, you know what, before you switch to manual mode, you might want to practice on the virtual flight. And also, if you want to change the stick, if you want to have that at the very bottom and not centered at the top with spring loaded, most FPV pilots will have this at zero at the very bottom. So you can actually do that by popping this backing and turning it to the right or tightening it. And what that will do is it'll bring that and now make that stick free. So if you pull it down, it'll stay down, hold it up, it'll stay up. Now I am gonna cancel this because I am not gonna go into manual mode. So I'm gonna switch that back to sport and then get back out of here. Now in the very top, you have stick mode. Right there, stick mode. So you can actually change it if you want mode one, two, or three. Go back out of this, you can go and change your gain. So you can change all of those things if you want to, all of your rates, you're able to do those adjustments here, as well as your RC calibration at the very top. So if you wanted to recalibrate your RC, just go ahead and do the RC calibration here, hit start and go through the prompts. Now going down, we do have a motion controller setting. The motion controller is not hooked up right now, but I do have one. So that will be in another video. So make sure you guys check out the motion controller video. Going down again, we have LED settings. So if you want to have LEDs on or off, what colors do you want? The colors on the arms, so right now it's set to red. So if I say, you know what, I want it to be this yellow. There you go, switch it to yellow. Or if I want it to be purple, switch it to purple. So you can change all of those things right there. You can see it, so I'll change it back to green. The arm LED pattern, you can either change that if you want the pattern to always be on, slow, fast, or waving. So you can change the brightness of it, what you want it to do, and the colors of it. Getting back out of there, we have gimbal pitch speed. So if you click down, you're able to change the gimbal speed right there from slow, normal, and fast, as well as gimbal calibration. So if you need to do some sort of gimbal calibration, you find out it might be drifting a little bit, always go back in, do a gimbal calibration. And at the very bottom, we have the coordinated S turn. If you wanna change it from a large roll angle to a small roll angle or disable it, and then units at the very bottom, if you wanted to change this from imperial to metric, you're able to do that right there. So let's jump back out of control. Now we have camera. So camera is where you're gonna change all of those camera settings. Right now we have 4K at 60, or if you wanna go into something like 1080p at 120, you're able to change all those settings in the camera. So right now we have camera parameters. You can change the camera mode from auto. You have full control, ISO, shutter. You have the control there. So if you wanted to be able to change certain things, if you are in manual mode, right now I'm in auto. So let's switch that over to manual mode. And now I can change things like the ISO shutter and exposure compensation, saturation, white balance, and uh, you can actually set the white balance if you wanted to there. So right now, just leave it back in auto and everything will automatically change. Get back out of here. Now, transmission quality, you have high quality and low latency. Video quality, we have 4K 60, 4K 50, 1080p 120, 1080p at 100, 1080p at 60, and 1080p at 50. Video formats, we do have MOV and MP4. Do you want guidelines in there? I normally do have the guidelines on, so I'll turn those on, but you can turn them off if you want to, as well as center point if you want to have the center point on or off. And then finally, we have the format SD card. So if you wanted to format your SD card, both on the drone and on the goggles, you're able to do that there. Getting back out of there, we have display. You have the brightness. I always have the uh, full brightness. 
course the brightness will then determine how much battery life you use. Zoom in and out, I normally have that at 100%, and then home point, I have that set. Home point's pretty cool because if you have home point set in your goggles, when you start flying around, you have this little H that follows and shows you where the home point is. So if you are unsure by your orientation, you just have to look at your goggles and there's a little H that shows up. So depending on where you are, it just keeps moving around you. And then if you wanted to go back home, all you do is line it up and fly towards that little H or that home point. And there it is guys, that was just a basic setup, getting everything pretty much prepped, ready to go before you actually get out there on your first flight. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. This is really like the basic setup here at home that you're gonna wanna do before you take it out for your very first flight. As always, if you guys got some value from this video, a big like would be much appreciated. And also don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos. This is Aldrin Astacio with flightpath.com. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.